A pair of AL clubs. It's the Los Angeles Angels against the Chicago White Sox. And it happens here on 2K Sports. Will they be able to limit the bat of Carlos Quinton? Well, we're going to find out. We're set to go. U.S. Cellular Field, always a delight to watch a ball game here in the home of the White Sox. Hi again, everybody. Gary Thorne, Steve Phillips, John Crack, middle of May, 2K Sports MLB. Starting pitcher, John Danks. Steve, as he faces these angel hitters, what's a primary emphasis? A good looking lefty on the mound right here against the lineup that could put some runs up on the board. So, pretty even matchup. So, it's going to come down to which side executes better than the other. Oftentimes, we say good pitching can beat good hitting. Let's take a look at the lineup the Angels have. It's brought to you by Pepsi. So who are you looking at, John? Well, with Torrey Hunter in your lineup on an everyday basis, you expect great things from him. And they're expecting that from him today. Eric Ibar leading it off. The Angels won last night. And I think very happy to end up splitting the series after losing the first of that two-game set against the Rangers in Texas. Here's a swing and a liner to left center. And the leadoff man of this ball game's on board. See if they get it started early. And now's a good time to take a brief look how the White Sox stack up defensively. And Steve scouting anyone here? Well, they're confident with Alex Rios out there. Just a solid all-around defender with a strong throwing arm. He's a quality defensive player. Curveball just misses 1 0. Well, they got a pitch a good drive last night in the ball game, hit out of the ballpark, and they love that sort of offensive production. Looked at Dank's pitch, 1 1. Well, outstanding movement on the cut fastball, but he left it out over the heart of the plate. He got away with one right there. On the ground to short, and it's picked up. Over to second for one. Back to first, not in time. Not quick enough on the relay. Well, they get the lead runner at second, but they just couldn't turn two. No, they wanted to. It's Morales at the plate. Well, John Danks is a left-handed pitcher, kind of in the mold of a Mark Burley. Left. There is a swing and a liner, and that is in there. Morales base hit. Now batting. Well, two hits the last game, and you can see he was getting a little confidence as that game went on, and he's carrying it into this one with another good start. And it's Torrey Hunter at the plate with one away. Certainly uh, for Danks, one of the problems is, is learning to stay out of that too fat part of the strike zone. Sometimes he just puts pitchers right down the middle and really doesn't have to because he's he's solid enough to keep the ball down low most of the time. Well, he really is, and he has such great mechanics, too. I mean, he and Mark Burley, they're very similar when you watch him pitch. If it was just a silhouette of him, you'd think that it could be either one of them on the mound that particular day. But he does give up a lot of home runs. And like you said, he needs to be able to find corners more. When he does, he'll be more consistent and a bigger winner. That one's low. Hunter does not offer. Now, if you tuned into the ball game last night, you saw the fact that he hit a home run in that game and you know, contributed to his team's yeah. offense. They'd love to get that sort of production again today. Well, he finished that one off with a strikeout. Nice pitch. Well, he keeps the runners right where they are, so now he's just an out away from working his way out of danger and keeping this game tied. And it's Juan Rivera at the plate. 273 is average last year against the White Sox. Now low and two, Danks with some pitches to play with. Here's a swing and a line drive. And he's there to retire the side. John Danks comes off the mound, works his way out of the first inning without allowing anyone to score. And the White Sox, their first chance is coming. And out on the mound, we'll see Jared Weaver. Anaheim's got him starting in this one. Johnny gets going here against these White Sox bats. What are you expecting? Well, maturity and confidence are at an all-time high for Jared Weaver, and it's going to lead into 2010. A straight fastball, but he throws across his body, so he's very deceptive, and he hides the ball well from the hitters. He has a changeup, a slider, and a curveball, and when he has them all working, it can be very difficult not only to pick up, but to hit. And that's in there. The White Sox get a man on. 
Presented by Pepsi, we'll show you the lineup Ozzy Guillen's got going. Now, John, anyone in particular we should keep an eye on? If you want to see power in the lineup, just look at Carlos Quentin. This guy can hit it out of the ballpark and hit it out anywhere. It doesn't matter if he's pitched away, he'll take it to right. If he's pitched in, he'll hit it to left field. Great power stroke, but the thing he's been working on this year is his consistency. And a runner on for Alexei Ramirez. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops in runs scored, top five. Swing sits this one pretty well, deep right center. One away. And we'll take a quick look at the Angels, how they'll be taking the field defensively. And, uh, Steve, individual factors out there. Well, solid defensively up the middle. Eric Ibar is a guy that can make every play defensively. He has terrific range and has all the ability and instincts to make plays. And it's Paul Canerco now. This ball is hammered deep right. It's back towards the wall, and he still puts it away. Well, we have a moment. Courtesy of State Farm, let's see who has the league league in hits. Number 20, Carlos Quentin. Carlos Quentin at the plate with two away. He's number one in runs scored in the league. And a swing and a miss on Weaver's delivery. 0 and 1. Uh, Gary, he, he can really swing the bat. Just a quality approach at the plate. Day in and day out. That consistency is critical to their success. Now breaking down Carlos Quentin's season so far. Let's see how he stacks up compared to everybody else. First in batting average. First in batting average with runners in scoring position. He's also a hit machine leading the league in hits right now. Swinging the bat well. Every time he puts it in play, he seems to find a hole. And Beckham's in the box. He's hitting 333 lifetime off the Angels. There's a swing. Line drive center field. That should be a base hit. Well, now he's coming up and play with the bases. Well, you see that single right there, Gary. Loads up the bases, and he's got to make this pitcher work. A lot of pressure now on the pitching. He's got to look for a pitch to drive. That pitch was way too low, but he swung at it anyway. It's a strike. Back up the middle. He's got it now. Throws to first in time. That's three down. Well, they load the bases on the strength of three base hits, but no runs. Still scoreless in Chicago. It's Mike Napoli to lead it off. Number 44, Mike Napoli. Danks gets him to swing and miss for a strike. Pitch on the way. And two strikes on him now. Mike Napoli, he'll take a look at these next pitches very closely. Well, they set up down and away. They throw it down and away. That's how you can be effective as a major league pitcher. Swing and a line to left. And it's through. Base hit for Napoli. That's going to bring up Bobby Abreu. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in batting average. First in batting average with runners in scoring position. And they're also number one in ERA. Their pitching staff getting it done better than everybody else right now. You limit the run scored, you give yourself a chance to win. Danks gets set and delivers. Lays off a called strike, 0-1. Here's the pitch. And it's 0-2. Abreu probably won't try and pull here. You're Bobby Abreu has struck out a big swing and a miss. Not much movement to speak of at just 88 miles per hour. He just looked a little uh, silly on that one, John. He was just flailing away. Well, that's the toughest pitch to hit, that pitch up and in. If you miss it, you look very foolish. And Woods batting. Well, the AL West was not very kind to the Chicago White Sox in 2009, and they need to turn that around. Danks gets him to swing and miss for a strike. 
for the White Sox against the West. They ended up going 15 and 18 on the uh, season. Oh. Had a pretty good run against the Angels, but that's the only team they had a winning record against. And that's shocking because the Angels had the best pitching in that division. So you'd wonder how the White Sox. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. Good offensive chance here. Now this one's coming to the inside part of the plate, but he manages to put the bat on the ball and drive it to right field. We call that a muscle hit, Steve. He just muscled that to the opposite field. How do you know it's a muscle hit? Muscles. Take a look at these. Oh, guns. The pitch hit on the ground towards second. He picks it up. That's one out. Over to first and safe. Very close play. They will not get the double play. Eric Ibar. Well, you love the approach right there. He didn't try to do too much. Wasn't trying to be the hero. Just get that RBI and get that first run on the board. It's Ibar at the plate. Well, they've done themselves quite a job here. This is a nice push at this point of the ball game to get out in front. Well, you have to credit this lineup, Gary. Some quality at bats right now and taking advantage of the opportunities, and now they have a lead. Well, they're going to be keeping an eye on Asturis right here because they know he can impact the game with his legs. Swung and a ground ball to third. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. They get that first run of the ball game here in the second. Something to work on. The Angels on top, one to nothing. For those of you just joining in, I'm Gary Thorne along with John Cruck and Steve Phillips. We bring you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. Leading it off, A.J. Przinsky, one of the best batting averages in the league. And a swing and a miss on Weaver's delivery. 0 and 1. Here it comes. Swung on. Makes contact. This one towards Rivera. And so Pierzynski retired. One down. Number 25. And Mark Tiana. Now, 2009, things were similar for the Angels as in the recent past. They've had a great season, gotten to the playoffs, but just have not been able to advance to a World Series. He swings on that 0-0 delivery, misses the fastball, strike one. Angels offense, they led the majors, and I don't think a lot of people would believe that in 2000. Now swinging a shot toward second. And that'll set down Tian. Designated hitter, number five. It's going to be Nix now. Two outs and nobody on. Has him out in front as he swings and misses strike one. See if he can't continue what he did last night when he picked up a couple hits. Strike that two. is strike two. Jared Weaver now. He's dominating. Well, anytime you recognize a slider, you got to be very patient with it. You can't be over anxious. You got to stay back. And then when you see it good enough, let it fly. Well, he was able to ring up that K and he needed it. And it got him out of the inning. And a Hitter Howie Kendrick bounced into a fielder's choice his last time. Number 47, Howie Kendrick. And he starts Kendrick out. There's a strike from Danks, now 0-1. Well, that's a quality fastball right there, just pounding the strike zone down and away. He had no chance to put that one in play. Yo, a little low, got it in the dirt, but he held on. The 1 1. There's a swing and a liner towards first. At the that will bring up Kendry Morales. First base he had a single in his last time up. Runner on first. First pitch to Morales. Liner towards the hole. And that will bring up Torrey Hunter. Put a nice swing on that one. He was sitting on fastball, got fastball, rips it to right field. Nice job. He leads the American League in walks. Oh. 
First pitch is a cut fastball, high, 1 0. Love his patience at the plate. One of the best in the game at doing it. Work the pitcher. He seems to never chase the ball off the plate. Danks gets set and delivers. Foul ball behind home plate. Now Przinski positions himself. That ball swung on, hit. Rios to field it. One away. Well, they're down already early in this game. They can't afford a big inning against them. That's a big first out. Now let's see what else you can do. Rivera at the plate. Well, Juan Rivera, 2009 with the Angels. He was a guy that you thought might be a platoon guy, you know, a part-time starter. He ended up getting 529 though at bats though. Hit 25 homers, drove in 88 runs for that powerful Angels offense. He snares it. The slide, and he is in there, safe. Boy, they've opened the door. Can Anaheim go through it? Juan Rivera having to share playing time a bit with the Angels, but boy, when he got the opportunity, he uh, could come off the bench or in a platoon situation showed he could deliver RBIs. Yeah, and it's such an advanced age in his 30s, and he finally became a, what you would call an everyday player, and he put up the numbers to prove to everyone that he deserves that spot in 2010. Now 0 and 2, Danks with some pitches to play with. The hitter now needs to protect the plate. Think about going right back up the middle. He makes contact, line drive. And it's caught by Ramirez. That'll keep the sacks full. He's got a shot of getting out of this now. Big time out. He's got two down. He's only one out away from working out of this jam. First pitch to Abreu. Abreu will foul that one away. Here's the delivery. Hit sharply down the line. And he throws on the first. That'll retire the side. They pick up three hits in the inning. They leave the sacks full. Angels won. The White Sox nothing. It'll be the leadoff man trying to get things going here. Quick look at Ozzie Guillen looking up. He knows he's going to have to get more innings like that last one and have some production to tie this one up. Weaver sets, throws, hot shot towards the hole, and it gets through two for two. So that brings Alexei Ramirez up on tap for the Angels. One game left for the White Sox, that's tomorrow. And they'll be taking on the Cardinals and a power bat in Ryan Ludwig, a team that will definitely give them a competitive series. That's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then a home series facing the Jays and their all-star Vernon Wells. That's a team they beat pretty soundly the last time around. And he's in the top echelon of hits right now. Runner on first base, nobody out. And Ramirez settles in, first pitch. Near first. And there's one. Now over to first and safe at first. The close play, not quite enough time to get him. He makes a nice play to get the lead runner at second base with a strong, accurate throw. Good footwork. They just couldn't get the double play. And Paul Canerco to bat. Well, leading the league in home runs. That's the second out. Now the lineups who are the hardest outs. Highest on base percentage the last 10 games. It's brought to you by State Farm. Number one, the White Sox. The Red Sox second. Third, the Mariners. The Twins fourth. And for the Blue Jays, they are in fifth. Now we've got a bona fide base dealer at first base, the kind of guy that can steal second when everybody knows he might be going. They're going to have to keep him close. And there's Hunter for out number three. How many of these good innings does he have inning? We're finding out. Jared Weaver. And Woods batting. Los Angeles Angels Designated hitter number three, Brandon Wood. First pitch on the way. Cutter just misses. 1 and 0. Here's Danks with a 1 0 pitch. Swung out and missed, and it's 1 and 1.
The 1 1 pitch. Ground ball to short. Fielded by Ramirez. Over to Canerco. One away. He could make a video on how to field his position. He gets over and makes it look easy. Solid fundamentals out at first base. Danks gets set and delivers. First pitch is a cutter. Looked at 0 and 1. When you can hit your spot with that kind of movement down and into the hitter, you're way ahead of the game. Good change up. It's quickly 0 and 2. Oh, tough one to lay off right there, that fastball. One and two. Well, that pitch right there just seemed to get away from the pitcher, took off on him. Looked like he tried to overthrow that a little bit. Swung on a fly ball down the left field line. And that should be a single. Now That'll bring up Eric Ibar. Here's how the Western Division is stacking up. We get to the heart of the baseball season. The look brought to you by State Farm. First place, the Angels. Mariners in second place. A's third. And it's the Rangers in fourth. The pitch. Ball. That's a curveball in that first pitch, but it misses. One ball, no strikes. Hitting 250 lifetime against John Danks. And that swung on and hit. Rios. And in there, he's two for three today. Now coming to the opportunity for Los offense Angeles is Angeles right now. Well, it's not going to take a genius to figure out that the hot zone for most major league hitters is a fastball right down the middle of the plate. That's exactly what the pitcher threw him, and that's why he got hit hard. And he starts Kendrick out. Well hit towards the middle. Over to second for one. And two. They got both of them that time. They pick up no runs on two hits and strand one. Angels one. The White Sox nothing. Five, six, seven hitters to get things started. Sneak a peek there at Mike Sosha. And uh, probably very happy to have that one run lead at this moment. Here's the first pick. Swung on, line to right field. And the Brayu gloves that one. That's one away. One out. And Alex Rios at the plate. Well, Jared Weaver really grew up in 2009 with the loss of teammate Nick Aidenhart. He really stepped up as a leader and matured as a. A swing line to left center. Streak continues. That gets in. That's going to bring up A.J. Pierzynski. For Jared Weaver now, he's become one of the horses in the uh, league as a pitcher got over that 200 inning pitch mark and effectively doing it John well, and that's the thing once you establish the fact that you can pitch 200 innings you expect to do it and a lot of pitchers right now you know they're told to back off a little bit you got to let these guys run he's a six seven kid let him go and let him pitch and that's what the Angels did and he rewarded them and right now top five and runs batted in in the league the pitch and that's a strike. A.J. Pruszynski now behind on the count. Defensive stance at the plate. Well, one of the offensive leaders in the game this year, and obviously a guy who's getting the job done for this offense is somebody they've really come to rely upon. And that'll put Pruszynski on first. And that'll bring Mark T into the plate. Boy, I don't know on that count, Steve, number one, the fact that he swung is kind of a surprise. I don't know how he hit that where it was. You're right. On an 0-2 count, you have to protect the plate. Sometimes it's a defensive swing, but sometimes it works out. And a swing and a miss on Weaver's delivery. 0-1. Here's the pitch. And that's a strike. Mark Tian's going to have to take very close approach on the next one. Well, you're going to see the frustration starting to mount a little bit here. They've had their opportunities. Getting base runners on, they just cannot come up with a big hit. But listen, sooner or later, you're going to capitalize if you get guys on. You know, sometimes in the back, you go five, six, seven pitches as they start to foul off the 0 2 count. I like that he went right at him aggressively, strikes him out on three pitches. Ball lifted high in the air, deep down the line and right. Goodbye, a three run homer. A huge three-run homer puts them up by two.
three run home run you better believe that's important let's see the impact on our Pepsi WPA chart. Now Gary looked like he was setting on that pitch he got it and drove it out of the park. What they're going to want to do in this ball game now is take advantage of that and build that momentum up. Now they need to still be aggressive out there and go right after. Now that's what you want. Run support for your pitching and attack the opposition. That's what the White Sox are doing right here. Two outs, space is empty. Now Napoli sets the target. Damon swings and misses for strike one. This is a really momentum feel home run. Uh, you get it at this point of the ball game. You had some juice to the whole offense. Well, this could be a decisive moment in the game. I mean, these hits early on could ultimately impact the result at the end of the game. Swung on and ripped towards second. He's got it. What a play. A challenging inning, to say the least. Jared Weaver giving up one home run in the ball game. We're through four in Chicago. And it's Kendry Morales to lead us off. Two for two in the game. Number eight, Kendry Morales. First pitch to Morales. There's a strike from Danks, now 0 and 1. He let that four-seam fastball go up and in in the zone. It's up in his eyes. You can see it well. He just couldn't pull the trigger. Swing, soft liner towards left center. And it is in there. That's going to bring the tying Getting run to the plate. plate. The and that's going to bring Torrey Hunter to the plate. But just what his team needed, he continues to swing a great bat. Three hits from now in this ball game, and he's on with no outs. Big things can happen anytime he steps in that batter's box. Here's the first pitch to Hunter. It's fouled off. No balls, one strike. Here's Danks towards center field, and that gets the tying run on board. The opportunity for offense is right now. Nice piece of hitting right there. He manages to drive that high 0 1 pitch for a base hit. Good patience, good pitch recognition. Sure looked like the hitter decided he wasn't going to get behind 0 2. He was going to wail. Uh, he was aggressive, no question about it. Got a pitch he could handle and took advantage. Swung on, grounded towards the hole. There's one. And the deuce of double play. Nice pickup on that one, then around for two. That's like infield drills in the pregame, except this time they got two outs. Nice work to get the double play. It's going to be Napoli. Two outs, a runner 90 feet from scoring at third. Danks gets set and delivers. Can't get him to chase that one outside, ball one. But Gary, these hitters are really now going to have to focus on his changeup. It is his best pitch, and it is one of the best around. Rios will field. That'll do it as they put that one away. They pick up no runs on two hits and strand one. The White Sox still on top. It'll be batters two through four do up next. Number 10, Alexi Ramirez. Weaver sets, throws. Chased one that time, nothing in one. Well, a great pitch and a great strike right there to get that pitch down and away. Look. You can throw it out there consistently. You keep doing it. You're going to have a lot of success. Should have let that one go by. Hits the dirt, but it's a strike on a swing. You're swing out. and a miss. Three Step strikes, and Alexei Ramirez is set down. Right Here's the four-seam fastball Number coming 14. at you in K-Cam. Get a better look. You see this one going up and away, and as a hitter, that pitch looks as big as ever, but it's so tough to make contact on it. Now what he's got to do now is make sure that doesn't affect his confidence on the next A-B. And Paul Canerco to bat. Well, the thing about Paul Canerco now at this stage in his career is he'll play a lot of games at first base, but when he needs a break, he can go to that. Hit sharply towards the hole. That's going to bring Carlos Quinton up. Canerco is certainly one of those valuable players, especially in the American League as a bench player, because he does give pitchers concern. You know if you make a mistake, he can drive one. Well, he really can, and that's the thing with him. And, you know, you remember back. Hot shot towards the hole.
Now breaking down Carlos Quentin's season so far, let's see how he stacks up compared to everybody else. First in doubles, first in batting average, and he's also the best at hitting in the clutch, leading and hitting with runners in scoring position. That ability to pick up the big run and come up with a big hit to drive in those runs. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. Stepping up to the plate for the Chicago White Sox. Alex Rios batting with two runners on. And one of the top ten averages right now. And he starts Rios out. And a swing and a miss on Weaver's delivery. 0-1. Pitch on the way. That's a strike and it's 0-2. Time for Rios now to protect. That's hit foul by Rios. And Alex Rios watching that one, and he's gone. So Jared Weaver out of the inning. Really needs the offense to come through for him. And we'll see the Angels. Here's a look at Ozzie, Ozzie Guillen. And now I'm sure glad to be out in front here with a two-run advantage, and he'll want to build on it. First pitch to Abreu. Paints the lower outside corner. Call strike one. This is the go-to pitch for many pitchers in the major league. The fastball down and away. When in doubt, that's where you go. Abreu will foul that one away. Danks gets set and delivers. And that one swung out and missed by Abreu. Uh, it seemed like he made it easy. Three pitches, big strikeout. Can't get rid of a guy any quicker than that. Only took three and he's gone. Here's the first pitch. Swung on, hit. Oh, man, was that close. That was right back at him. Somehow he got out of the way. And that's going to bring his tourist to the plate. Well, he stayed behind the ball right there real well. Got himself that one-out base hit. First pitch on the way. They set up away. Cutter misses. 1 0. Oh. He had eight hits and 20 at bats last season against the White Sox. Looked at Dank's pitch. 1 and 1. He throws that cut fastball up and into the hitter. Kind of surprised him. He couldn't offer at it. Here's the 1 1 pitch. 1 1 pitch is a cut fastball taken for a strike. 1 and 2. Catcher can't control it. There's the throw. And he gets there in time. Second base. Oh. Fouled away. And here's the pitch. Swing and a rocket towards short. And Ramirez feels the ball. Too late, and he is safe at second. The opportunity for offense is right now. Why, after all that effort, seeing all those pitches, you had a good feeling that the hitter was at the advantage, and he was right there, finally getting that big hit. First pitch to him on the ground to second. He grabs it off the hop. That's two gone. Here's what the White Sox schedule looks like. They wrap up this Los Angeles series tomorrow. And then they have to contend with Dan Ugla and the Marlins. That's a three-game series. Following that, they'll head to Cleveland to take on the Indians, a team they beat in the previous series between the two. And Howie Kendrick up. Odds oh, pretty good. Six ABs, two hits last year against Stanks. And he lets that one go by. Howie Kendrick evens the count. Good spot for the changeup that time. One and two. Well, they're a strike away right now from getting out of this jam and holding on to the lead. And he lets that one go by. Howie Kendrick evens the count. Ground ball towards the second baseman. 
And he's got it. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. They pick up no runs on two hits and strand one. White Sox three. The Angels one. Leading it off, A.J. Krasinski. Top five AL and run scored. A.J. Krasinski. And here's the first one. And a swing and a miss on Weaver's delivery. 0-1. Well, he's having some kind of offensive season, Gary. Really in the middle of everything this team's doing offensively. To the left side. And it gets through. Not bad. Two for three today. That brings up Mark Tian. Now let's take a peek at the league leaders in batting average, courtesy of State Farm. All of these guys, quality contact hitters. And, you know, when you're that kind of a hitter, it means that you can hit any kind of pitch the pitcher throws, and you're using the whole field. You're hitting it where it's pitched. First one to Tian. Here's the pitch up the middle. And he'll have to hold at first. Now batting. Good baseball and a good job. Let's take a look. Well, you know, we talk about team in baseball, and that's where you see it a lot of times on defense. It's going to be Knicks now. Lifetime, he's picked up no hits, three at bats off Jared Weaver. One down, runner at first. Slider swung on and missed. 0 oh and 1. Well, this one here was no doubt about it. The late break on that slider. I mean, what a devastating pitch, and the hitter just couldn't catch up. Good hard slider that time. He's in control in the count now, 0 and 2. Well, right there, you can just. That one swung on, hit in the air to deep right center field. It's up against the wall on a bounce. That will bring up Johnny Damon. Two for three thus far. Runners on second and third, one down. Weaver sets, throws. Damon swings and misses for strike one. Swung on line to right center field. It falls in there, and Brzezinski will score. Can't cut it off. It's going to roll to the wall. And that makes two runs in. Boy, the continuation here of this offense is called big-time momentum. Alexi Ramirez. Well, a guy that just continues to swing the bat well in this ball game. Three hits right now so far. And it comes with one out in the inning. Can it start a rally? And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. And the offense here is putting on the show. Right now, they're in charge of this ball game. You know, after giving up runs like that, this is where the pitcher has to bow his neck and shut down the opponent. Damage control. This is where you uh, begin to wonder whether this game is going to start slipping away or not. Swung on, liner to right. Two down. And he holds the runner at second. Now the State Farm leaderboard to look at pitching staffs who have been the hardest to get in the last ten games. Rays number one. Second, the Indians. The Angels third. Fourth, the Orioles. And uh, fifth best, the A's. Well, these teams right here are tough to face because they just do not give up many base hits. And you've got to make the most of those hits when you get them and try to bunch them together. And it's going to be Fernando Rodney on the mound. He's coming on in relief for the Angels. Catcher gets a hold of that one in the dirt. Swing and a miss. Canerco not making contact. That'll even up the count. Over his career, a solid 385 off Fernando Rodney. Deep down the line and right. This one rolls through to the wall. And Damon crosses the plate. And he is out at second. They pick up four hits in the inning and three runs cross the plate. White Sox, they've got a commanding five-run lead. He's a perfect three for three in the ball game. For eight, Kendry Morales. And we'll get to see Matt Thornton pitching as the White Sox bring him in as a reliever. I'll tell you what, this is one of those decisions you can go either way. He's pitched pretty well to this point, but it is getting late. And do you want to take any chances? The manager decides to go to the pen. Right. 
Gets that call at the knees, evens the count at one apiece. The hitter thought that ball was inside. It certainly wasn't low, and it looks like it was in there. Here's the pitch. 1-1 one, one pitch, slider, taken for a strike, 1-2. and two. One two pitch coming. Big swing and a miss on a heater. Strung him out one down. Well, you can hang laundry on that one. 94 miles per hour. Pretty good velocity, but that's pretty straight. A good job of keeping and guessing by changing speeds out there. And boy, John, you saw the effect of that. That swing, he wasn't even in the same time zone. But going from off speed to a heater like that is never easy. And even guys that make the big bucks have a hard time adjusting. That one's low. Hunter does not offer. Well, the thing you love about Torrey Hunter, he goes out to the Angels after leaving Minnesota. He signs a big contract, and all he did was... Hit hard to second. Beckham. Two retired here. The Central Division race is starting to take shape. Let's take a look at the State Farm standings board. First place, the White Sox. In the second spot, the Twins. In third place, it's the Royals. Tigers in fourth place. And down at the bottom, the Cleveland Indians. Not a lot of expectations in Chicago this year, but the White Sox surprising everybody sitting atop of the American League Central right now and, and building that confidence level. Here's the pitch to Rivera. Oh. Just missed with the fastball, 1-0. Oh. Well, it's getting late right now, two outs here in the seventh inning, and you know they're down by a bunch of runs. They need to start to get something going right here, Gary. A swing and a foul off to the right side. The pitch, flied to right, and there's Quentin for out number three. No runs, no hits, no one left on. The White Sox maintaining their lead. And the first pitch, that swung on, line towards the gap in left center. And in there for a base hit. He's three for four today. That's going to bring Gordon Beckham up. Well, breaking down Carlos Quentin's season so far. Let's see how he stacks up compared to everybody else. First in doubles, first in batting average, and he's also the best at hitting in the clutch, leading at hitting with runners in scoring position. That ability to pick up the big run and come up with a big hit to drive in those runs. So they can't make the play. Gary, to make the error right there, you just don't want to do that. It's just not good baseball. Oh, Fernando tough. Rodney with strike two, maybe a K. Oh, he just swung late on that one. That's what you call getting gassed up. Swing liner back up the middle. And there's another one. Couple of quick hits. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. Uh, now he's surrendered three straight hits. He's got to bounce back and get this guy. He needs an out. Here's Alex Rios now. RBI chance. Rodney fooled him on that one. That's it foul by Rios. The pitch from Rodney. Rios again fouling it off. Swing sits this one pretty well deep right center. Bounces up against the wall, and Quinton's home. And here's a second runner heading for the plate. And the second run comes in. And he'll stop at second base. That'll be a two-run double. Number 12, A.J. Kurzinski. They're just teeing off right now. Four straight hits, and clearly this offense is locked in. Chance to drive it around A.J. Kurzinski. Boy, this lineup is just pushing the pitching right now. It's tough to get anybody out. Well, they're showing no mercy at all. They're just not letting up. Put the pedal to the metal, and they keep on going. 
And his tourist gloves that one. And he looks that runner back to second base. And Mark Tiana. He went one for three last year off Rodney. First one to Tian. Here's the pitch. Line shot into center field. Two away. That will hold the runner at second. It's going to be Nix now. He homered earlier in the ballgame. Well, Gary, the team's ahead right now, and obviously his offensive production has been a major contribution here. Driving in runs with those at-bats, and obviously the big home run. So the power stroke coming along as well. The pitch from Rodney. Swings at that fastball and misses 0-1. Well, you have to be ready for something hard, and this guy wasn't anticipating it. That's why he was late on that two-seam fastball. Oh, with that big hit right there, he only needs a triple to complete the cycle. But, hey, that's the toughest one to get. Let's see if he can do it. Two men on, two men out. First pitch on the way to Damon. Just missed that one for strike one. That changeup away is one of the most effective pitches because when the hitter's fooled, he starts to pull off the ball. He can only hit an inside pitch. He can't possibly reach the outside pitch unless he breaks down his swing. Comes set, now the 1-1. Swing and a drive, deep left center. And they can't cut it off. It'll roll to the wall. And they score him. And he's in as well. And he'll stop at second base. That'll be a two-run double. Number 10, Alexi Ramirez. Well, they just can't figure out a way to get this guy out. That's now four hits for him in this game. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. Line drive. Throws on to first. Side is retired. Big offensive inning. Five base hits and four runs. White Sox continue to run away with this ball game. Is Mike Socia you're looking at? The thoughts of a manager, one can only speculate, but at this point, you've got to believe he's, he's got some words for that next practice. Here's the first pitch. It's 0 and 1 as he swings and misses at that fastball. Well, it's getting late right now. They're down a bunch, so th they need a big inning here. They can't wait till the ninth to try to come all the way back. They need to try to do something now. And two strikes on him now. Mike Napoli, he'll take a look at these next pitches very closely. Uh, great stuff from the pitcher. Now he's ahead 0-2. He can go in so many different directions. Oh! Napoli will foul that one away. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Mike Napoli is struck out. Credit the pitcher right there. Good two-strike pitch down and away. Not much he could have done with that, even if he had made contact. And it's Bobby Abreu at the plate. Well, so many teams could have had Bobby Abreu prior to the 2009 season. The Angels took him, paid him minimal money for a star player, and what does he do? Oh. Another year of 100 RBIs. Fouled off that first pitch, and it's 0-1. Bobby Abreu brought to the Angels what the skipper loves, and that's a very patient appearance at the plate. Well, and he kind of turned that whole team around. They became a lot more patient team. You saw a lot of the players on the Angels get close to that 300 mark. A lot of it has to do with what Bobby Abreu has taught them. Got him there. That was a nice strikeout. Well, that's what you love to see from a pitcher, setting guys down quickly. Keeps that pitch count down. One, two, three. Can't ask for any more efficiency than that, John. No, an excellent pitch selection there. He delivers. There's one that's in there called strike. Uh, Gary, I think right now that uh, you've got to consider trading out. Headed for the middle, Thornton. You're throws to first side, is retired. No hits, nobody left on, and a good defensive half inning. And if you were just tuning in, hi, Gary Thorne along with John Crux, Steve Phillips. We bring you Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. 
You know, Gary, I think you're losing a little something here. I don't think this guy's nearly as solid defensively as the one he's replacing, so interesting move. And Paul Kodarko to lead it off. Had an RBI single his last time to the plate. And he starts Konerko out. He swings and drives this one. And he puts that one away. One down. Right fielder. Number Carlos Quinton batting now. There's one down. Three for four thus far. Hit sharply towards the hole. And it gets in there. Another base hit. He's done it four times today. That's going to bring Gordon Beckham up. Now breaking down Carlos Quentin's season so far. Let's see how he stacks up compared to everybody else. First in doubles, first in batting average, and he's also the best at hitting in the clutch, leading at hitting with runners in scoring position. That ability to pick up the big run and come up with a big hit to drive in those runs. And in there, he gets that one down. That's his third hit, three for five. Well, anytime you're a hitter and you can get three hits in a game, you're going to see that average start creeping up to where you want it to be. And he's on now with one out. Runners on first and second with one out. The pitch from Rodney. Fastball swung out and missed. 0 and 1. Well, runners on first and second, one out. They need a double play ball. They've got to get out of this jam. It's happened all game long, and they just have not been able to make the pitch they needed. We get a moment to take a look at the extra base hit leaders around the league, brought to you by State Farm. A.J. Perzinski. Chance to drive it a run, A.J. Perzinski. And the bases are loaded for him. And I tell you what, they've been swinging the bat so well in this game. One more hit right here, and this thing is over. This is a big lead already. First pitch, here it comes. Smashes that one towards the shortstop. Out at the plate. And he's going to hang on to it. No relay, so they will not get the double play. Ball hit the short. He decides he's going to go home with it. Now he's got to make the accurate throw. He does it and gets the force at the plate. Good pitch as he's late on that one. 0 and 1. Lifetime record, 2 for 9 off Rodney. He deals. And that's a strike. Mark Tian's going to have to take very close approach on the next one. Fastball swung on and missed. Side retired. So they load the bases on the strength of three base hits, but no run. The White Sox, 10. The Angels, 1. There's a familiar face, Isaac Gian looking up. Great game this club has put together. Things have gone really well. And we'll get to see Bobby Jenks pitching as they make the pitching swap. And he gets into the Angels lineup now, John. What about what he's thinking about? Well, Bobby Jenks is one of these big, big closers that come in the game, kind of like they were back in the 80s and the early 90s. A big guy that comes out and throws absolute gas. Easy, smooth motion that generates 98 to 100 mile an hour fastball. He's a strikeout pitcher, and he finishes games. Towards the middle, fielded by Ramirez, and that'll sit down as Torres. I uh, you we know, winning big right now. You just want to go out there, make plays, throw strikes, force them to try to put multiple hits together to get back into this game. And that's in there at the letters for a strike. Now the hitter lays off this one and takes the strike, realizing not a pitch he wants in this situation. There's a swing in contact. This one to Damon. And that's a base Coming hit. Gets back. down in front of him. Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Second baseman, number 47, Howie Kendrick. Now Howie Kendrick batting, a runner on first. Just faced each other a couple of times, 0 for 2 against Bobby Jenks. Jenks with a delivery. And that misses 1-0. In there at the letters, evening the count, one and one. Well, purpose pitch right there. He gets the strike on it, goes up and in, and it opens up the entire strike zone now. The 2-1 pitch. That one misses. It gets away from the catcher. Strike 
And that's in there, three and two. Now that he's gotten the four-seamer down and in, look for him to go outside now. The full count pitch. Swing and a miss on the fastball, second out in the inning. With two strikes, the hitter wanted the fastball. He got it, but didn't do anything with it. It's Morales at the plate. He was a strikeout victim last time through the lineup. First pitch on the way. Great one! Oh and one Jenks kicks and deals. Morales makes contact. That'll be fouled away. And it's in there. Strike three call. That's it. But it went a great one here today, Gary, and it's all because of the pitching. Outstanding pitching really leading them to victory. Now a look at our Pepsi Clutch performer, our stand-up performance deserving of recognition. Well, anytime you have three legs of the cycle, you know you've had a decent enough game to help your team win. Look, would he have loved to hit the triple to get the cycle, something that's rarely done in Major League Baseball? Sure he would. But I think if you ask him after the game, he's going to say, look, all I want to do is help our team win. And that's what he did with those big, big hits. Steve, it seemed like they knew from the get-go they had it. This was going to be their day, and they were right. Uh, you and I like the close games just because there's a little more intrigue for all nine innings, but the hometown fans, they like the offensive explosion and the big win. So for Steve Phillips and John Kruk, I'm Gary Thorne. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you soon.